have been so impressed by first the beauty of Tunis and the spirit of the people of Tunisia. Your revolution was the first of the Middle East countries and I think the most hopeful in the changes that have already occurred and that are anticipated, the most hopeful for achieving a genuine democracy, genuine democracy. And one aspect that is particularly pleasing to me is the extent to which women are playing a role in this transition and I anticipate will will play an important role in the government when it's fully functioning. The Constitution, of course, must set up a structure of government, provide for a legislative power, an executive power, and a judicial power. So the structure of government is one necessary part and in creating a judicial branch, the Constitution should provide safeguards for the independence of the judges so that they can judge cases impartially without regard to, as, as we say in our oath of office, uh, we judge without respect to persons equally for the rich and for the poor, for the woman and for the man. So the Constitution needs to, needs to provide for the security of the judges, their security against removal because the political powers, the executive or the legislature, don't like the judgments that the court is issuing. So. Judicial independence is very important. A declaration of rights, the rights of the people, is also essential. We have a Bill of Rights that was um, became part of the United States Constitution in 1791, but today there are many models that Tunisia could use. The European Convention on Human Rights is one. There is a very full Declaration of Rights in a remarkable new constitution. It's the Constitution of South Africa. If I were someone involved in setting up a, a new government, protective of rights in Tunisia, I would certainly look to the Constitution of South Africa and specifically to their guarantees of, of rights as one source that you, you would want to consult.